Here's a simulation of a blending process using three mass flow controllers. The gas will come from this regulator, and in this case we're using one gas, but for the process there'll be three separate gases, nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. From here, the gas will flow into this T and into the mixing tube, where it will flow into this tank to be stored. This pressure transducer will monitor the pressure in the tank. From this tank, it will go to the regulator. From the regulator, it will go to the rotameter. And from the rotameter, it will go to the process. This is the box that will connect the mass flow controllers to the computer and also power the mass flow controllers. The first thing you want to do is, it doesn't matter which one you, you plug into, but you got to, from the mass flow controller to this notch, from another mass flow controller into here, another mass flow controller plugged into here, and then this will be the pressure transducer. Again, it doesn't matter which one you want to use, you can use any, any which ones you want, but you got to make sure they're plugged in. This is the cable that will connect to your computer. Plug this one in right here. And finally, and this is the most important step, this powers the entire unit and all the pressure transducers. So you cannot set them up or, or play with the settings without this being plugged in and these being plugged in as well to the pressure transducers and, and mass flow controllers. For this blender system, there are three mass flow controllers. One set up for nitrogen, one set up for oxygen, one set up for CO2. In order to set up each mass flow controller, first you'll want to turn the light on in order to see the screen, which you hit which is hitting the Matheson logo. Next, in the depressurized unit, you'll see that there's a PSIA, temperature, set point, liters per minute, standard cubic centimeters per minute, and then this button that does total slash menu. You hit that button once, and it brings you to a second menu, which with more things to choose from, and then just click menu main, the same button a second time, and it brings you to another menu with control, about, tears, basic configuration, advanced setup, main. If, the, if you want to zero out the mass flow controller, you can hit the tears button, tear the flow, and then you can zero it out if there's no flow in it. But the main thing to set this unit up in order to be used for the, the, the computer program is the advanced setup. Once in the advanced setup, you'll see sensor setup, comm setup, display setup. You'll want to hit the comm setup. And the important thing is making sure this unit ID is different from the rest of the units that are being tra tracked in the software. In this case, unit ID A. This one has already been set up for unit ID A, but in order to change it, you click on that button, you click up or down in order to set what the unit will be called. And each one of these has to be a different unit number. Once you've picked your unit number or unit letter or unit designation, you can hit set and it will set it up and you'll be able to read it on the computer program. This is how to set up the pressure transducer so it can be recognized by the FlowVision software. Just like the digital mass flow controller, there is a tear on this as well if it's not reading zero whenever there's no pressure in the system and that can happen sometimes. And, but you'll want to hit the menu button right down at the bottom and you'll get a few options about tears, basic configuration, advanced setup, and main again, but you want to click on advanced setup. And again, you'll get sensor setup, comm setup, display setup, and you'll want to hit comm setup. And again, you want to pick a unit ID letter that is different from all the other mass flow controllers or anything else in the system. And you can click on that and you can either go up or down on it to pick one. In this case, we're going to pick D. You click on set and then that sets it up for it to be recognized by the computer in the FlowVision software. When you load up the FlowVision software, this is the interface you will see. In the background, you'll see some grayed out pictures. You want to double click on one of them. When you were setting up the system before, there were three mass flow controllers, which will be the mixing items and the monitoring item will be the pressure transducer. So click on the mixing and this is where the device identifier will come into play. Whichever one you gave A will be the one that comes up. There might be multiple choices for COM port, but you want to choose the USB serial port in parentheses COM, and that will be some number. It could be 8, could be 10, but in this case it's 4. And then you can pick a, pick a mix percentage. This can be changed later, so you can pick whatever one you want. And again, this is the low pressure alarm. Pick whatever low pressure alarm you want, and again, this can be, this can be changed at a later time. And you click on Add, and it will come up in the corner. 
Again, you want to set up the next mass flow controller. So double click on this one, click on mixing, pick the next device identifier, which in this case is B. It's on serial com port 4. And then you can click on 45% and 10, just using that for this example, and you add that. And do the same thing for device C. Again, you can pick a random numbers to set it up and click add. And then finally, after this one is added, and if you'll notice, there's an N2O2 CO2 associated with each device already. It has the model numbers, the serial numbers, and it'll, it, this, the N2 already goes from 0 to 5 SLPM, O2 0 to 5 SLPM, and the CO2 0 to 0.5 SLPM, which is again is 500 SCCM. And then finally, you'll double click on another picture and it will, we will go to monitoring to set up the pressure transducer. In this case, we gave it the D identifier, CO COM port 4, and you want to pick a random number, whatever works for whatever you're doing. And after it comes up, you'll see there's some pressure in the line. Uh, and finally, the main thing is you want to set a flow rate that you want to have. So you can go up, so this based on, based on what we have here, as you can see, I clicked in 45 for this. It will not work because it adds up over 100. You want to add that to a 10. So all these percentages must add up to 100. And then it tells you how high your flow can go based on those inputs. In this case it can go up to 5 SLPM so we'll just put up the 5 SLPM. And if the system is pressurized and ready to go, when you hit start mixing, you'll see all of the bars get filled up. In this case you set it to 45 percent. Here's the actual 45 percent, give or take a few percentage points. Again this one's set to 45 percent, give or take a few percentage points. And this one is set to 10 percent and again it's 10 percent give or take a few percentage points and because this CO2 is the limiting factor for how high this can go the 0 0.5 is the one that is maxed out so if you were to stop mixing and you could change this to 4.5 and click start mixing the CO2 will be a little bit less because that is the one that is limiting it right now and as you can see here's the pressure slowly building up because it's filling the tank right now and once that tank is filled it can go into the regulator and you can set your flow meter to whatever flow you want to go into the process because it's, it's, the flow is driving because it's getting to up to 50 psi. That is the that is the, uh, the 50 psi is the upper limit we set for this particular system just for the demo. And as it flows through there, the mixers the Mass flow controllers will compensate and keep the tank filled and the process will continue on.